Good morning, everybody. Welcome to City Hall. Welcome to Council Chambers, and welcome to a meeting of the Los Angeles City Council for today, Wednesday, June 16th, 2004. The City Council meets every Tuesday, Wednesday, and Friday at 10 a.m. Meetings are open to the public, and we do invite you to join us. For members of the public unable to attend council meetings, we can be viewed live on your cable station, Channel 35. We can also be viewed live via webcast from the City's homepage or heard via Council phone. Madam Clerk, please call the roll. Cardenas, Garcetti, Grohl, Hahn, LaBange, Ludlow, Miskowski, Parks, Perry, Reyes, Smith, Viragosa, Weissstein, Padilla, 10 members present, and a quorum, Mr. President. Thank you very much. Before beginning with the matters appearing on today's agenda, uh, we do have a couple of special uh, presentations scheduled for today. Let me recognize Council Member Zine to start today's meeting. Thank you, uh, Mr. President. Good morning to all. I've uh, got some uh, members of our wonderful Valley community that are going to join me. That's the cue to come on up. Thank you very much. There was a uh, major, major project in the San Fernando Valley, major development called the Amundsen Ranch Development, 5,000 acres. And there was a group of people in the community that wanted to maintain a sense of community, a sense of pride, a sense of open space. And they dug in and they fought. And they fought, and they fought, 
and they fought and they didn't give up. While some surrendered, a number of people did not surrender. And I'm proud to uh, recognize two people today from the West San Fernando Valley, Joe Bihar and Christy Tandy, for their efforts. And we also have presentations, but they're not here today. Paul and Eve Wagner, Ron and Patty Levy, also were tenacious in their efforts. And this project, called the Amundsen Ranch Development, was designed to build over 3,000 homes, three golf courses, two hotels, and the associated traffic environmental problems caused great concern for the community. And recently, we were all honored by Heal the Bay in Santa Monica for our efforts in preventing this disaster to the environment. And it was through the hard work and dedication of a group of people of the West San Fernando Valley that really, really dug in. And when I ran for office, I was, the, uh, I think, the only candidate in that area to say I would fight this. And if I had to pitch my tent at Valley Circle and Victory Boulevard to uh, stop the bulldozers, I would do that. And uh, Joe Bihar and a number of other people in the community said, well, we will join you. We're going to have a tent city out here in the San Fernando Valley to make sure this doesn't happen. As it ends up, Proposition 50 passed, and the state of California purchased through the Santa Monica Conservancy the land, which is now going to be preserved for generations to come as an open space. And we've attached the name to this new development, not the Amundsen Ranch, but it's now called the Upper Los Virgenes Open Space Preserve. And there was a dedication ceremony which we attended recently. But I wanted to bring forth the people in the community who were staunch supporters of maintaining the environment, staunch supporters of working together, grassroots. This is really a grassroots effort that brought this about. And on behalf of the City of Los Angeles, and I want to acknowledge all of my colleagues here in the council, also the mayor and our city attorney, Rocco Del Gudillo, who joined with me to say that we would withstand the pressures of the development. We would fight that along with a number of our neighboring cities, municipalities, and we were very successful in that. So it all ended up, well, we're going to have the open space for generations to come, but if it wasn't for the hard work and dedication of people that are here with us today, Joe and Christy, uh, we wouldn't be at this point to preserve this beautiful open space, which those of you who frequent in the San Fernando Valley or venture in the San Fernando Valley as you're traveling north on the 101 freeway, it's on the right side of the freeway after the Sagebrush Cantina, after the uh, area of Mulholland where the Ventura Freeway crosses, that whole area, over 3,000 acres, which is preserved, and we're now working with the Conservancy to establish ingress and egress so people will have a park. Not as large as Griffith Park, where uh, Tom LeBongeno hikes every single day, but it will be a beautiful open space where you can bring your children to the San Fernando Valley and enjoy all the benefits of our great community. So Joe Bihar, on behalf of the Los Angeles City Council and all the people who thank you for all the work you did to prevent this disaster to nature and to preserve what we have in the San Fernando Valley and that far west valley. And I met you during my campaign. I remember we were out there working hard. And here we are celebrating today, years later. So Joe, congratulations. Thank you for the friendship and for the hard work and dedication. Again, Heal the Bay was, was very uh, accommodating and congratulated us for our efforts. And, and Christy Tandy, also for you, for what you've done to also help out in this endeavor. And we have these other presentations. We'll make it a later date to the other participants. You can come on in the picture. It's OK. Everyone has a better half, right? Right, Joe? That's right. That's right. And I'm going to turn the microphone over to you folks to, uh, to have a few comments. Uh, first, Joe Bihar. I want to thank uh, Councilman Zine for all his support and all his help in uh, making this dream come true. Antonio Villagorosa, which also was very supportive in the beginning uh, as speaker, and he helped a lot. Mayor Hahn and all those uh, councilmen and uh, council people that uh, came to uh, Canoga Park that evening and heard the community's cry for help. Uh, it shows that government can work and pe when people get involved, things can get done. So I tell everyone, don't give up and fight for what you believe in. Thank you very much. Chrissy? 
I have also a lot of people to thank for this. And what this is is a great lesson in grassroots advocacy. And one person really can make a difference and create an awareness. And then other people get on board. And we all work together to make big things happen. And this was huge. And what an amazing legacy we've left the city of Los Angeles. And I thank everyone for your help. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you, colleagues. Thank you, Mr. Zine. Uh, for another special presentation, let me recognize Councilmember Parks, who will uh, in turn introduce a couple of very special guests we have with us in council chambers this morning. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, I'm standing in for uh, Martin Ludlow today. Uh, and uh, he's off sick today. But we want to ask Nate Holden to come up. Uh, Nate Holden needs no introduction. But what Martin wanted to do, and I think in behalf of all of the council, is to bring him back celebrating his 75th birthday. Oh. 75. And. I'm sorry I put that on Channel 35, Nate. Uh, <laughs> but uh, uh, I thought it was a fitting tribute. Uh, Nate born uh, 75 years ago on June the 19th. It was June, Juneteenth. Uh, and so it's a special holiday, uh, particularly in the uh, black community that we celebrate. And certainly all of us know his accomplishments, his uh, many years on the uh, city council, uh, also the uh, uh, years at the state senate. Uh, also, we have shown that since you've been gone, Nate, that we've had significantly shorter meetings, cut down on paper. We've had, <laughs> we've had less 14 to 1 votes. I mean, so all those things, uh, <laughs> well, maybe not less. <laughs> but uh, the issues are we certainly have always appreciated you. You've always spoken your mind. You've always been a tribute to this city. And on behalf of uh, uh, certainly uh, uh, honored to me to stand in for uh, Martin today and wish you a happy birthday for your 75 years, uh, particularly the service in the city of Los Angeles. Ms. Perry. Rule number one, Mr. Parks, you never mentioned Nate Holden's age. That's rule <laughs> number one. I'm happy to see Mr. Holden here today and to be able to wish him a happy birthday and to just remind Janice, Janice, you need to hear this, I'm, I, th I am out of the doghouse, I am out of the doghouse and that uh, we are loving each other again as fellow Geminis and uh, I feel really good about that and this time I plan on staying out for good. Mr. Garcetti. Thank you, Mr. President. Nate, a very happy birthday to you. I know 75 is a diamond anniversary, so I know it's probably a bittersweet day for you as our Laker uh, cheerleader here, uh, having the, uh, the unfortunate loss last night, but I know that you have been a, a diamond here in this city. I want to wish you a very, very happy birthday. It's wonderful to have you back in chambers, and thank Mr. Parks for doing this. Have a, a great 75th and onward. Ms. Hahn. Thank you, Mr. President. Well, I'm, I want to rise and uh, first thank uh, Nate for letting Jan out of the doghouse, although I understand there's a wing on that doghouse that has your name on it. So, you know, I, you may be out, but uh, never far from, from there. Nate, I, you know, I, was, I really didn't want to sign this because I think they had the numbers reversed. They're reversed. <laughs> yeah, because uh, I, I never thought you were 75 and in fact I you know thought we weren't supposed to talk about it but here we are today celebrating you celebrating your birthday we miss you we miss you a lot and uh, happy birthday and many many more next on the queue is uh, Mr. Zine thank you Mr. President uh, Councilmember Holden 75. I, I still remember down at Florence and Normandy when I saw you, when you were down there, when I was working with the LAPD, and all the activities that took place, and the friendship that was established, and all the years that we've known each other. It, it's a milestone, and you've been a good friend. You'll always be a good friend, and I wish you well. 
I know that your community activities continue. Your love for the city is without, without any limits. Uh, I remember the uh, celebrations that we, we shared together and all the wonderful days we spent together and some of the evenings we spent together too on the town of Los Angeles. So uh, we have. Nate and I have been out in the town and have a good time. And it's all been good. Right, Nate? Good food and good wine. And it's always a pleasure to dine with Nate Holden. And everywhere we go, there's the councilman Nate Holden. So I, I appreciate all the friendship that we've shared. I wish you well. And come back here another five years, another five years. And good health and happiness to you always, my good friend. God bless you. Mr. Reyes. Councilman, I just wanted to say happy birthday and let you know that I've always appreciated your genuineness, how you supported those who at times did not get any support because you felt what was right, what was wrong, you spoke your mind, and you were either O Holden or Mick Holden when it was appropriate, so you had to embrace all cultures, and for that I thank you. And I uh, just wish you a happy 75th birthday and thank you for all that you've been able to provide for the city. And believe me, I've learned a lot of what to do and what not to do. Thank you very much. <laughs> Mr. Labanche. Nate, uh, happy, happy birthday to you. I also want to say uh, I run into people who still say very kind things about you uh, and they miss you, which is nice when anybody serves the public for as long as you do. Uh, Martin's doing a great job trying to get it all done and uh, do it in the fine fashion uh, that has been established uh, in the 10th district, not just with you, but I see we have another former alumnus of Dave Cunningham from the 10th district here today, ironically. Uh, so it's very special. Nate, happy birthday to you, and thanks for uh, all that you do. And you look as good as, as uh, any man. And uh, Bernard, he, look how good he looks. You know, this is a guy who did run for mayor once. He looks real good, so. Uh, not my thing, Tom. Uh, <laughs> thank you. Not my thing, Thank no. you very much, Mr. Labange, and I'm, I'm sure you'll be uh, showing us a one-handed push-up just to, on your 75th. We'll, we'll hold off on that. Ms. Misikowski is our next speaker, followed by Ms. Gruel, Mr. Smith, Mr. Villaragosa. Jan started with rule number one. Rule number two was definitely never let Nate get near the microphone. So it, I'm wondering if it's in order at this time to move the previous question. <laughs> Well, we know that he'll withhold or find some obscure rule, but in the meantime, Ms. Gruel is our next speaker. Ms. Gruel. Thank you, Mr. Garcetti. Nate, we miss you. Um, and uh, for me, uh, we always enjoyed celebrating your birthday. I hope uh, when I am uh, your age, I won't repeat it again, um, uh, that uh, I look as good, as I'm active as, as you are, as uh, committed and passionate um, and uh, we just wanted to say we, we love you and miss you and, and glad you're here and come back and visit more often. Thank you. Thank you very much, Ms. Gruel. Mr. Smith is our next speaker. Well, thank you. It's good to see Nate here. And, you know, uh, Mr. Parks mentioned that we haven't quite filled the void, that we're, our meeting's quite as long, but Tom is working on that aspect. <laughs> and I want you to know there's a lot of 14 1 votes around here. I'm trying to fill that aspect. But the, the thing that we haven't gotten straight without you here is, you stand up and you speak with great passion and understanding and care about something and turn around and vote no on it. Now, nobody's <laughs> mastered that like you had it mastered, but uh, Nate, you're a pleasure to be around. You're always fun to be in the council chamber. It's good to see you. Happy birthday to you, and please come back anytime. Thank you, so much. Thank you Mr. Smith and Mr. Viragosa. I didn't have the opportunity to serve with uh, Mr. Holden, but uh, like all of us in public life, uh, we, our roads cross. And over the years, when I think of those people that fix the potholes and do all the small things that make you uh, an important and great public servant, we think about Nate Holden, because uh, he learned from the best. Uh, Mr. Hahn, uh, Kenneth Hahn, uh, the quintessential uh, pothole fixer and just all around good guy. Uh, and that's what you are as well. So happy birthday to you. You look fantastic. Uh, and I know you have a lot more years in the private sector and 
We're looking forward to them. Thank you very much. And Mr. Padilla, we, our final speaker for Mr. Cardenas' seat. I'll just be quick. Nate, happy birthday. Uh, you don't look 75. You just don't. And uh, I know your brain is a lot sharper than 75, too. So uh, it looked great. Wonderful to have you back. You're always welcome back. And I want to make sure you introduce another uh, former colleague around this horseshoe who's here in council chambers. I'll give you that honor today. We know this is a dangerous thing, but Mr. Holden, the microphone is yours. <laughs> Mr. Cunningham. Mr. Cunningham served this council for 13 years. He was the council member from the 10th district and uh, copied so much in that area and we are uh, proud of what he was able to do for us and paved the way for me to assume the position as a council person and made my job a lot easier. You want to say anything, David? Yeah. What a lot of people, what, what Nate and I have not shared with members of the city council is that many years ago we worked together at Hughes Aircraft Company. And uh, what a lot of you don't know is I gave Nate his first campaign contribution to get him started in politics when he was running for the CDC presidency and when he ran for Congress. And I've been exposed many times by Nate Holden trying to help him get ahead. The other thing Nate, I don't think he knows also, is that while he's born on the 19th of June, I'm born on the 24th of June. So I'm pleased to say to you, happy birthday, Nate, uh, on your 75th birthday. I hope you still got that uh, Carvette we used to run around in. You remember that? Okay. Good luck, Nate. Best of everything to you. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Cunningham. And to each and every one of you, thank you for acknowledging that uh, I'm 57. I mean, I mean, this is 75. I don't know where that came from. But nevertheless, if you say it's 75, I'll accept it. And I want you to know that uh, there's been some wonderful years in my life that I've been able to live, and you've been a part of it, uh, part of my political life and uh, my social life. And I might say that uh, uh, it was tough getting started in this business, as Mr. Cunningham said, that uh, we worked in the aerospace industry together at the Hughes Aircraft Company. And uh, he had a high post there, and I was just a member of the technical staff. As it turns out that I ran for Congress, he did support me. But uh, once I was elected more than 32 years ago in the California State Senate, having served with one of the finest public servants in the history of our country, and that's Supervisor Kenneth Hahn. Then I went on to serve in the Senate and came back to his office and, and to the city council. And that which I was able to accomplish here and on the behalf of the people of the 10th District of the City of Los Angeles, really I came from him. Just watching him move around, watching him walk, watching him serve the public and what he was able to do for each and every one of us. And so when my time, time came and term limits said I should leave. Uh, I could have just stayed away from, from the council chambers and said I'll just sit out my time at home, come in once in a while, but I didn't. I felt the responsibility was to share my institution knowledge and memory which in each and every one of you. And each time I raised an issue and you wanted to call it for the previous question, I felt it was important that the, we put the, a lot of that information on the table and because I've done so, as it was done for me when I arrived, it hopefully has enabled each and every one of you to carry on a tradition that has been established over the years of this city council. You serve in a very prestigious body. This is one of the most prominent council in the United States of America. And you have a lot of influence over people's lives. In fact, if you ask them who the mayor is in the 10th or the 9th or the 8th or whatever, they say it's that council person because they make those kind of critical decisions. And though we do have a mayor who participate in that process, but I want you to know that uh, each and every one of you have been uh, inspiring for me, inspiration for me. Even when you voted no, I like that. I really like that, especially when it was 14 to 1. It kind of made me stand out a little bit. But I want you to know that uh, I'm glad to say here today that we have a unanimous vote. 
all 15 councilpersons. When I was first elected, and there were so many 14 to 1 votes, Mr. Smith, uh, what I offered, what I promised to do for the members of the council, and you can do it also, was to give them all a rubber stamp. I only bought 14. <laughs> Pretty good, huh? <laughs> that was cold, wasn't it? But in any case, uh, I want to once again thank you for inviting me back to the council. Thank you for your acknowledgement, and thanks the people of the city of Los Angeles. They really made my day and made my life happy for me, for my family. God bless each and every one of you, and uh, I'll always remember you. Thank you very much, Nate. Oh, may I say one other thing here? I think I, your time has expired, Mr. Holden. I you know. have to press your button again. <laughs> All right, I, Mike Hernandez, where are you? I saw Mike over here. Come over here, Mike. The love of my life. Come here, Mike. My friend, Cosman Mike Hernandez, he's one of the finest persons that's ever sat in one of these seats here. And the smartest. You know, this guy is brilliant. One of the few guys I know who knows much more than I do. And I'm going to tell you, sitting in my office one day, we're talking about those SAT scores. No, 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 I shouldn't tell him, Mike. No, 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 no. Well, anyway, I won't tell him. Anyway. You can tell him what I was doing with your foot, though. That's right. The highest score you can get is 1,600. That's the highest. Mike Hernandez. 1580, Miss Wayne. That's who's working with us. Mike Hernandez. Now, and let me share with you something about Councilman Holden and I. Uh, when he was my seatmate, I learned to step on his right foot when I wanted him to say something. <laughs> <laughs> All right, thank you very much. Happy birthday. Thank you very much, Mr. Holden. Thank you, Mr. Parks. If we can return to the regular agenda, please. Uh, we'll take public comment right now. Uh, well, first order of business is approval of the minutes. Okay. Those, Mr. Reyes moves. Mr. Viragosa seconds. Commendatory resolutions for approval. Okay. Uh, Mr. Smith moves and Mr. Weiss seconds. Those are approved. And this is time for comments from the public on items not on councils. Okay. Now it's time for public comment, ladies and gentlemen, on items uh, that are uh, under the purview of the City Council but not agendized today. I'd like to invite the following speakers forward uh, to the microphone. Uh, Jesus uh, Berrostro Moreno, Anastasia Martinon, Elisa Avina Padilla, Martin Torres, and Miguel Angel Perez. If you would like to all please step forward to the microphone and uh, wait a moment for uh, our translator to come over and then we will start public comment in just one moment. Please, por favor. My name is Anastasia Martignon. Venemos este, somos campesinos, venemos este que. We're farmers. We want to. A la tierra que estamos quiere que no las dejen. If you can leave us the land that we have. That's all. Gracias. Thank you. My name is Elisa Viña Padilla. Queremos que nos ayuden para andamos luchando por la tierra que nosotros trabajamos, la cultivamos y tenemos familia, niños que andan allí trabajando. We want you to help us in the land that we work, we cultivate, and we have children that are working the land. Y la tierra es del que lo trabaja. The land is for the one that works it. That's all. Gracias por su testimonio. Miguel Angel Perez, Los Angeles Land Use Coalition, still lies in support, 41st in Alameda, South Central Farmers. As you all heard right now, 
two campesinas that work the land, that express some words very humbly to you all here present and to the city of Los Angeles and to all her concern about our daily habits that we have, we eat. They were speaking of their children, their families that work the land. If you paid attention to their words, from their hearts and their minds, the respect of human dignity, of human kindness and understanding that these people here, us, all of us, speak of. One more time, aquí estamos y no nos vamos, tierra y libertad. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Perez. This now closes our public comment for today. If we can please return to the agendized items. On the regular agenda, Mr. President, item number one is an item notice for public hearing. Council should open the hearing and continue the hearing and ordinance to July 7th. Okay, that public hearing is opened and continued until that date. Next item is item number two. That's also public hearing item. Applicant requests continuance to August 11th. Okay, if there's no objection, we will continue that to August 11th. Next items are items for which public hearings have been held, items 3 through 27. Okay, colleagues, items 3 through 27, any specials? Any specials 3 through 27? If not, Madam Clerk, if you'll please open the roll. Please close the roll and tabulate the votes. 13 ayes. Those items are approved. Next set of items. Next items are items for which public hearings have not been held, items 28 through 45. Okay. Sorry, yes. It went so quickly, I was looking. Yes, Ms. Gruel. Um, uh, I think we want to call item number 27 uh, special. Okay, we'd like to reconsider item 27, Ms. Gruel. And 24 oh. and 25, we were going to um, receive and file 24 and 25 and continue uh, one week, uh, hopefully with Ms. Perry's uh, agreement, uh, continue that for one week. And they all need to be reconsidered in order to okay. do that. So the, w the items that you've mentioned are 24. I heard you say item number two, sorry. Sorry, to, so just to clarify, the items are 24, 25, and 27 that you'd like to reconsider at this point before we yes, take action? Thank okay. You. All right, if there's. And 26 to be. And 26. Also. Thank you. So 24 through 27 uh, are before us for reconsideration. If you'll please open the roll. Please close the roll and tabulate the vote. 13 ayes. Okay. Let's set those aside for, for a moment. Okay. okay. Uh, next set of items. Next items are 28 through 45. Uh, public hearing has not been held. Ten votes are required for consideration. Okay. We have uh, cards for items 28 and 29. Um, so let's call those special. And any other special? Oh, and 45 we have a card for as well. Any other specials, colleagues? Mr. Zahn? I, I need to have reconsideration of 6 and 22 for special, please. Okay. 6 and 22 will return Did to we already go past that? We did, but we'll return that in one second. Any other specials, Thank colleagues, you. from 28 through 45? If not, let's hold the ones for a card and the rest of the balance of items if we can open the roll. Please close the roll and tabulate the vote. 13 ayes. Ms. Ferry? I, I had my, is my button not showing up on the screen? Oh, it is now. I'm sorry. Yes. Okay. I was uh, on 41. I wanted it continued. Okay. Well, we, you want that continued? Okay. All right. Let's reconsider 6, 22, and 41. We can open the roll on those items, 6, 22, and 41. And please close the, open the roll, close the roll, and tabulate the vote. 13 ayes. Okay, those are reconsidered in 41. Uh, till what date, Ms. Perry? Ms. Perry, what date would you like 41 continue to? Just 60 days. Please. Okay. T two days? Uh, 60. 60. Okay. We can't quite hear the, how many days you were saying, Ms. Barry. 60. Oh, 60 days. Okay. That's a good, healthy continuation. All right. Um, if there's no objection, we'll continue that. Do we have a date, Ms. That would be Madam August Clerk. 17th. Okay, August 17th. Are we in, in session then? Uh, yes, that's the last day. Okay. So that will be till August 17th on item 41. Okay. We have um, 6 and 22 back on the board as well. Okay. Those are reconsidered as well. So if we can go to the first item, please.
Uh, I'm sorry, uh, Mr. President. Then uh, items 46 through 51 are uh, closed sessions. Do you wish to hold those on the desk? Yes, let's hold the closed session items on the desk. And do you wish to go back to the items that were called special? Please. Okay, the first item is called special were uh, the group uh, items 24, I 25, think we had item 26, six, and 27. Uh, as well that we just reconsidered. Okay. Um, and item 22 is the second one after that. Okay. Uh, Mr. Zine, on item 6. Yes, on item number 6. That issue uh, deals with the uh, Santa, Mountain Mount Santa Monta Mountain Conservancy and um, the uh, dollars. I think we have some staff here, some members from the Conservancy, to answer some questions. And this is the status of acquisition of property and other expenditures from the Conservancy. The uh, residents between Ventura and Sunset are being assessed for the next 30 years, if I recall correctly. $40 a year to acquire land and there was a recent uh, Department of Finance audit released last month and there were some serious questions about the expenditures of the dollars, the collection of the dollars are in the tax rolls and the expenditure uh, and the documents that we have show that no property acquisition is listed, no property acquisition prices are listed I should say and it shows expenditure $61,564, but no acquisition. And the question, what are the parcels on the engineer's report? What are other parcels on the engineer's report? That's a report that we received listing some of the factors. So um, I think we have the executive director from the Conservancy with us. I don't know if there's any other staff here to assist in this. Uh, the concern I have in some of the residents of my district, and I'm sure some of the other hillside districts, were concerned about the assessment and wonder what was going to happen with the money. There was a, a vote that was taken, and that vote passed, and they're now being assessed these dollars. And the question is the acquisition of the properties and the uh, finances and the dollars and where they're going and what is exactly happening. And the finance audit that was done by the state didn't show that it was managed in a shall we say, a good manner. So, Joe, if you could uh, identify and respond to some of those issues and clarify and give us the assurance <clears throat> that the taxes that are being collected are going for the purpose that they were intended. Yes, Mr. Chair Mr. President and members of the Council, uh, good morning. Uh, Joe Edmiston, uh, in this capacity, is the Executive Officer of the Mountains Recreation and Conservation Authority. The Conservation Authority is a joint powers agreement between the Santa Monica Mountains Conservancy and two recreation and park districts in our region. Uh, the benefit assessment districts were established and we have a, a very uh, informative PowerPoint presentation. Unfortunately, the way that this is programmed on the screen, you'll have to see it in four different quadrants. Um, and I'd like to introduce our Deputy Director for Natural Resources and Planning, Paul Edelman. And Paul has been spearheading this assessment district, and I'd like to have Paul give you the presentation. Thank you. We, MRCA, the acronym for the Mountains Recreation and Conservation Authority, successfully established the two first pure open space benefit assessment districts in the state. There are two districts in the city of LA, portion of the Santa Monica Mountains, divided by the 405 freeway. There's a citizens oversight committees for each of the districts with council appointees. Here are the appointees to that citizens oversight committee to look over the fiscal aspects of those districts. District one on the, go back. Should go back. Oh, darn it. Yeah, can we back that up? Okay, go to previous. Okay. Go up there to previous. All right, Paul. Do we have a copy of this for the council members, or is it just the uh, visual? We can provide it. Okay. Going backwards, put it into a, a strange menu. It's okay then, Paul. You go okay. Well. well, it won't go forward now either. But if so, I, I'll talk while somebody. The District 1 raised after the bonds were issued. Here, here it is. Here it is. Let's go to previous. After the bonds were sold for District 1, there was $14 million. There you go. It's like a mouse. Okay. It's a mouse. Okay. 
14 million dollars were raised. Here the, the appointees by the council districts, council districts four, five, two in uh, district one. What about district three? District three is in, is in um, assessment district two. Okay. So two assessment districts. Okay. $14 million for acquisition. To date, we've acquired 94 acres, 39 parcels, and there's over $7 million left to spend. This gives you a, a, an area idea of the sub-acquisition areas within District 1. The yellow parcels are those we've acquired. In District 4 in Lake Hollywood, we've acquired some property next to Griffith Park and next to the Hollywood Reservoir. Beautiful property. Properties below the Hollywood Dam that were tax defaulted, shown here in green. We're hoping to get some additional property and we're in negotiations up above Lake Hollywood that will expand Griffith Park to the west, sh shown in red, it's on Coanga Peak. We purchased a key property right at the Mohan Drive Bridge in the Coanga Pass. It's visible for all the commuters and important for wildlife movement across the 101 freeway. We purchased a whole cluster of properties, almost 100 acres in Laurel Canyon and also in the Coenga Pass, shown here. Mulholland is the red line. The Briar Summit property is the key largest of those. These are pictures of it, it's visible from all over the city, this peak. Oakshire property has three springs on it. This is a small tax defaulted property in Laurel Canyon. The largest piece of open space in the Sunset Plaza area above Sunset Boulevard, 10 acres, we acquired that. Now getting into Council District 5 from Council District 4, we're acquiring a, a, a load of properties along the ridge line on the eastern boundary of the Stone Canyon Reservoir where there's a t small lot subdivision. The MRCA has to put in 20% of the cost of all the acquisitions. This is an example in CD5 in uh, Be Beverly Glen where we bought a property that accesses an existing state park using state bond funds. And this is just a summation of what the money that the MRCA or the value that the MRCA has put in with funds other than what's raised by the homeowner's assessment, at least $725,000 to date. I mean, right. These are some, switching to District 2, which includes CDs 3, CD5, and CD5 on the west side of the 405. Here are the members of the Citizens Oversight Committee. The chair is Eric Edmonds. Okay. Um, uh, District 2 raised $12 million for acquisition. Why don't you go back to the advisory? Okay. Whoops. See it messed up. Yeah. No, no, you, it's right up there on the screen. Yeah. Going backwards is our error. Is this going forward or backwards? Forwards. District 4 is, and that slide shows it's District 4 is divided into four sub acquisition areas. There you go. Okay. Close in the bottom right. These are the members of the Citizens Oversight Committee, appointed by Council Member Zine and Council Member Weiss. $12 million, 13 parcels we've acquired, over 1,500 acres, and still $6 million more to go to expend. This is a, the amount of general benefit that the MRC has already put in with other state bond funds, over $2.5 million. These are the distribution of the properties within the blue assessment district boundary that we've acquired in yellow. These include the Tucker Eastport property in Mandeville Canyon, 1,500 acres. Shown here in green. 
uh, key properties in Woodland Hills. This is the Cirillus Drive overlook that has maybe the best view of the Santa Monica Mountains that you can imagine. Properties up against Mulholland Gateway Park. Properties along Dirt Mulholland as you enter Mulholland Gateway Park, shown in green. And Chalk Hills, which is 21 acres. It's visible from the Ventura Freeway and a prominent landmark that is just an exceptionally beautiful property in Council District 3. And that concludes our presentation. Mr. President and members, I think it's important to realize that this is a separate, uh, these assessment districts, as you know, are separately created, they're separately audited. There is the Citizens Advisory or Citizens Oversight Committee that must pass on every single acquisition. And we are very happy that uh, two of the most prominent view sheds have been acquired. Uh, everyone knows that travels the 101 freeway, uh, the, about the only uh, amount of green space you can look at in certain areas is look over at the Chalk Hills. We're very happy that that uh, very prominent valley landmark has been protected. Likewise, as you're going over the Cahuenga Pass, uh, you're looking at the Mulholland Bridge, uh, a lot of new development there. There won't be any new development in terms of looking up at that view shed of the Mulholland Bridge because that's been acquired. So we're very proud of what's been happening in the last uh, year since we, in fact, less than a year uh, since the lawsuit was settled. The bonds were sold uh, only in March of this year, and so we have done quite a bit of work in the last uh, three and a half months. Happy to answer any questions that the council may have. Uh, thank you, Joe. Thank you for the explanation. Uh, one of the issues, we have some property acquisitions, but doesn't show the price that we paid for those. We, we will provide that to, to the council offices. Okay, well, I think we need the, to provide the, that to the public. The concern is the taxpayers in certain areas are paying this assessment, and it's imposed upon them, and they're asking questions, what are we getting for our dollar? And then when we start asking questions, it comes to us, it needs to go to the public, it needs to go to the people who are paying the bill. The people paying that bond are the residents within those boundaries, District 1 and District 2, and many of them in my district, who complained that they were unsure, they were unaware, uh, the vote was faulty, a lot of issues that came up. That's behind us. What's before us right now is what we're doing with the money that's being collected, that they're indebted to pay for the next, I think it's 30 years if I'm not mistaken on the assessment. That's correct. We do have a comprehensive website that I would uh, ask everyone to look at. It's www.mrca.ca.gov and we have the detailed information on that website that's available to everyone and there's a link to that website also on the Santa Monica Mountains Conservancy's website. And does that show the price that they're paying for parcels? Yes, it does. So it's all listed there? Yes. Okay, uh, another question came up regarding administrative costs, that the audit showed the administrative costs were excessive compared to other departments. Has that been checked? Uh, first of all, there are two separate issues. That was regarding the Santa Monica Mountains Conservancy. This is a separate joint powers entity, separate district, the Mountains Recreation Conservation Authority. Uh, there are no cost allocation, no administrative cost allocations made out of this uh, assessment district. Okay, what about the uh, question of the bond money that is being assessed for building upgrades, educational programs, legal costs, um, membership in airline club, phone bill, other the, expenditures. Uh, let me just make clear. First of all, I'm sure no one around this uh, semicircle has ever encountered uh, an incorrect LA Times story, or maybe you have. Uh, the Attorney General has reviewed all of these expenditures. The lawyers for the Conservancy, these are appropriate expenditures. But the main issue I want to emphasize today is that the Benefit Assessment District, Open Space District, is totally separate from, there's, that, that audit did not have anything to do with the Assessment District, and that had to do with bond funds, Proposition 12, Proposition 40, Proposition 50. Nothing at all to do with the assessments here. And they're totally separately audited. There are separate accounts that are held by separate fiscal officers. And every single one of those expenditures has been reviewed by the Citizen Oversight Committee, which you all have appointees on. Those of you who have districts have appointees on. So, so I understand there's different bonds and different funds. 
But they all come under your purview. Well, they're separately audited, separately um, accounted for, and the bonds that we're talking about here, first of all, the Attorney General and the lawyers for the Conservancy disagreed with the Department of Finance. That disagreement never made it into the uh, Los Angeles Times, notwithstanding our fervent efforts to do so. And by the way, those opinions are also available on the Conservancy's website, smmc.ca.gov. Uh, so in terms of the auditing, of, uh, I just want to emphasize the state bond funds are separate from and different from the assessment district monies. And those monies are not commingled. They are kept separate and segregated. And the questions about the bond funds, they didn't like educational interpretation. They didn't like the Lely River Center. The Attorney General's office said, you know what, these are perfectly appropriate uh, expenditures of money for park purposes. And I would urge uh, everyone who's interested to look at the website. We have a 116-page response. The LA Times, of course, said that we dumped a 116-page response on them. Well, we didn't dump it on them. We answered every single question punctiliously and in excruciating detail. So I would urge everyone, your staff, I'm not urging the council members to spend all your time there, but direct your staff to uh, www.smmc.ca.gov, and very prominently displayed is a point-by-point -point refutation from the attorneys that represent the Conservancy on every single one of those issues. Okay, and the concern that I have representing an area that's impacted by this is that when the people paying the bill ask the questions, we give them the honest answers, and when there's a cloud, and I think you will understand there's a cloud that we need to remove to show that what we're doing is appropriate as the conservation efforts continue, as we try to preserve land, and I acknowledge what you've done for that area. It's been a tremendous improvement. I know the fight we had with Amundsen. We were there together to celebrate that. So you have a long history of nature and preserving and the environment. But when the taxpayers start seeing and start hearing and start questioning, and they come to us and say, what are you doing about this? We need to acknowledge and we need to respond and we need to say, this is or isn't a problem, and when the state does an audit and they start raising some questions, it creates this red flag that obviously we're all concerned with. Thank you, Mr. My Zan. concern is that when we have those dollars come in annually for the expenditures of the properties, we gather as much as we can because we want to preserve as much as we can, and when these other issues come up, that we respond to them in an appropriate fashion, and obviously there has to be oversight. There's oversight over everything. There's oversight over your operations, the Citizens Committee. I don't know how often they meet. I don't know how involved they are, but I know what happened with EIDC. Mr. Zine, if I and can EIDC ask you was a major problem that created a disaster in the in this city, and we don't want the same thing to happen with this, this situation with the environment and the conservancy. And that's my concern: is that we keep it crystal clear and crystal clean for everyone's benefit. Thank you, Mr. Zine. Thank you. Appreciate it. Uh, Ms. Miskowski is our next speaker. Thank you, Mr. Zine. And, and I think actually a lot of thank yous uh, should be given. One to Mr. LeBond, you brought in the motion to say, you know, we've got that assessment benefit, assessment district over there. What's happening with it? So uh, Mr. LeBond brought in the motion. It came to Arts, Health, and Humanity. And I really appreciate what the Conservancy's done. And a, the biggest thank you goes to the voters, because the Conservancy and the MRCA came up with the idea to say, let's ask people in the mountains, are they willing to tax themselves to buy parcels? And I've got to tell you, when I look at this first report, this first annual expenditure plan, it's phenomenal. Mr. Zine, I represented a lot of those territories uh, in the Woodland Hills area along Dirt Mulholland. And when I can look up there today, and uh, Paul, I don't know that you, everything's turned off now, but that Chalk Hills piece alone is beautiful. And members, you may not know Chalk Hills, but if you're driving on the 101, you're going out, you see on the going west, you see, or north, you see Warner Center on one side, all the big buildings. You look south and you see the most beautiful rolling hills, the first bit of real open space, really close to Ventura Boulevard. Their access is less than a block from Ventura Boulevard. That was shown to us today, 21 acres as purchased. And Mr. Zion, you said, what's the cost of it? Look what was happening in the area F. They raised $4 million in that segment of this area. 
They bought Chalk Hills, Cerritos Drive, Cerritos Drive 2, and four dirt Mulholland properties and spent $3 million for that. I don't care what the assessment said. That is a great deal. $3 million even for 21 acres out there, prime potential condo. And believe me, Mr. Zine, you would have heard if Chalk Hills was being threatened with development, you would have, it, it's smaller than Amundsen Ranch, but everyone would have seen it, everyone would have known it. So that these pieces are purchased, and I'm just picking that one as an example, because I lived through different development potential threats there, different developers who were saying, I've got the plan to grade those mountains down and put houses on top of it. Great view lots, great view properties, um, but even greater that today it's in the public uh, public domain. And that you can go through that property by property. Uh, the ones on the south side of Mulholland, uh, Eastport Tucker, 1,200 acres that we found the money and the way to finance that to guarantee. It was the property, some of it, the smaller part, earned by owned by Bert Bachman originally. We've now got a complete trail from Mandeville up to Mulholland and over. Um, this really is a benefit. I mean, we call it the benefit assessment district. We just use that term legally. But there's no question. It is a huge public benefit. And those names that ran up there quickly for both the east side and the west side of districts, they weren't just names that elected officials might have put up there. But you had the Hillside Federation. You had the uh, different organizations, the neighborhood groups, who nominated and put on that citizen oversight committee their own people. So it's, it's created not just by one entity who appoints, but a lot of entities, including a lot of our basic neighborhood organizations. They themselves are there as the oversight to make sure the money is being spent and also to bring to the attention of the Conservancy and the MRCA the best, best pieces. So um, one, thank you, congratulations. Uh, I would like to see us annually get this just to see more and more of those spaces. And every space that we buy today is a space that doesn't turn up on this council within a year or two or three looking for a serious track map development, serious grading, serious denuding of that hillside, and instead preserving it forever. So I think it's a great, uh, great opportunity, great work being done, and I, I for one, want to say thank you. Mr. Reyes. Thank you, Council President. You know, colleagues, we're hearing about the dollars and cents. We're hearing about these technical um, financial uh, concerns that are very real. I want to thank Council Zine in reaffirming the clarity and the transparency of the work of Mr. Edmondson and giving him the opportunity to let everyone know that it's okay to look in his closet, I think. It's okay to look in the different places in which people say he's hiding money or moving money. He's telling us, this is where it's at, folks. Want to look at it? Here it is. You ask the question, here's the answer. And when you give him the answer, well, it's too much information. You can't seem to satisfy everyone. But it's important to have that confidence. And I think the truth is the strongest thing you can have to talk about how we can promote change. And I personally want to thank him and his staff for being able to work with the county, the state, the federal government, and the city government and putting together complicated deals that spoke to the notion of open space, especially in areas that are park poor. I want to thank Council Supervisor Gloria Molina for her hard work, then State Senator Polanco, then Councilor Mike Hernandez, and working in a very complicated, using Section 108 loans to make sure that we preserve the Lawry Center, the River Center, create a Home Depot, and use the retail tax dollars, sales tax dollars, to pay back a 6108 loan. In the process, create a hub for a grand vision that's going to amplify the connection of the Arroyo with the LA River. Start talking about how the foothills of Santa Monica, starting in Northeast, can continue to maintain their historic open spaces. The whole issue of Belmont and putting it together a park in the inner city. Where else would you find a state entity a county entity, a city, federal, working together to, to open up a place where you have 30,000 people per square mile, where kids are stuck in hallways, fire escapes, they don't have a place to run and, and play, and they're going to have a park now. I can say the same thing for the cornfield, when you talk about how in Lincoln Heights I have over 30,000 people per square mile. I can say the same thing for the Taylor Yards. These are Brownsfield areas. These are areas where the city can't spend its Brownsfield dollars. And we, here we have a professional entity with expertise trying to put together scenarios that says this is the way it can get done, and they're actually doing it. So I want to thank them for their hard work. 
I want to thank them for thinking of the kids who get sucked into gang violence, who get sucked into the culture of drugs and these illegal activities because they have no schools to go to. The only school they have are prisons. We spend more dollars per prison, per individual in prison than we do for children in schools. That is a crime. And to be able to open up land and park is where we need to be. So those of us who live in these conditions, those of us who are surviving these conditions, to be able to have open space is a blessing. More than that, he's also thinking about how we connect housing, how we connect job development opportunities, and all this is interconnected. And it talks about the health of a city, the health of a region. So Joe, thank you. You need this kind of support. If people have those questions, visit his website. And if you have any questions about what they're doing in my district, I'll be more than happy to give you a tour. And I'll be more than happy to show you what we're doing for our children and our grandchildren in the future. Thank, thank you, you, Joe. Mr. Labange. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Mr. President. Mr. Zine, what do you think about this right here? I love nature. Say it again. I didn't hear it. I love nature. You love nature. Well, that's why it's so important to have the conservancy to preserve nature and the work that you've done. And I just wanted to stand. I always want people to have their books in order, the process in order, which we all have to do. And, uh, and I know you've addressed some of those concerns with certain concepts and ideas. But the fact is that, Dennis, I talk about Mulholland a lot uh, because of what Mulholland did uh, for this city and bringing water. But I also sometimes talk about Joe Edmondson and what you've done in bringing land together for the open space of the people in future generations. And when Cindy spoke of the work uh, at Chalk Hill uh, coming in on the 101, I remembered when I was in like grade school, 23 people in a Ford Falcon station wagon. We went out to Pacific <laughs> Boys Home. And there was nothing but eucalyptus out there. And it was open space. Wouldn't that be wonderful to see again? Well, you're trying to grab it before it's all gone. And I remember today happens to be the anniversary which I met my wife uh, at 6907 Lancashire Boulevard at the Palomino one night. Hoyt Axon was playing. But I remember in our early days, I would, my wife would drive through Southern California and I, and I'd say, take a look around. Take a look around. And, and one day it's all going to be built on. And now I say that to our children because everything gets built on unless we preserve it. You've done great work for future generations of Angelinos, the team. Uh, obviously, we want it, everything squared away, as you and your board do, and those citizens who do. But I just want to stand and thank you. And also, Sydney, I want to thank you, because early on, you've always been an advocate, because you worked for the great Marvin Browdy, who is the father of the Santa Monica Mountains. Is that correct? And I want to hear it, Joe. The good Lord had something to do with it, but after the good Lord did his work, then Marvin did good, his. I like that. It's a good thing how you say that. See, you couldn't say that if you're up in the county. You see, you couldn't use those words. But anyway, I think it's just great that what you're doing. And also, Ed, as you spoke of, it's so great, too, that they've gone east of uh, Sepulveda, east of Coinga, and, and into uh, 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 Glassell Park, Highland Park, Cypress Park, the Los Angeles River, and beyond, and Echo Park. So it's so important because we're all tied to that mountain. Uh, thank you very, very much. I appreciate Mr. Edelman's work and uh, Dash's work and all the team because it's very important. But constantly informing the people of what the value of buying the land and, and with their support, we could do a lot of good. Thank you. Mr. LaVange, and maybe one day we'll reach the foothills of the San Gabriel Mountains. Right. Right. We will. Mr. Weiss. Thank you, Mr. President. A lot, lot of uh, good comments. I just want to echo what so many of you have said and thank um, Mr. Edmiston and everybody from the Conservancy. Um, as someone who represents a district that includes uh, so much open space, um, so much of that open space is open because of what you've done. And, uh, and I know that and I appreciate it. The people I represent appreciate it. And uh, as Mr. Ray has said, our challenge is to do more, uh, and to do more in more places. It's a challenge that this council uh, readily embraces, and I know it's a challenge that you embrace as well. Uh, and uh, as you've shown with the, I am, I am blanking on it, but that, that new facility, um, oh gosh darn it, 
it's it's in uh, it's in I think Ms. Perry's district um, that uh, the Augustus Hawkins Park. At that's the it. Um, Lawson. Good stuff. Those and, moments uh, happen to me very frequently. It's probably the first one you've ever had. I don't know about that, but it's on TV. Um, anyway, uh, I know I know that your heart is in the right place, and it's in the entirety of the places that we have here uh, in this region. And uh, and I just I just want you to keep doing what you're doing. Thank you, Ms. Grohl. Uh, Mr. President, I just wanted to make one. Uh, comment uh, particularly to Council Member Zine and the other members of the Council. We recognize that no matter how good the work that we do, you can't justify good work if you haven't appropriately and conservatively spent the taxpayers' dollars. So we recognize that and we recognize our obligation not only to do good work but also to do it in a way that protects the taxpayer and we're committed to doing that. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you, uh, we're Joe. We're not done yet. Ed. We're not. Uh, appreciate uh, your comments and, and again the comments of my colleagues about the importance of the Santa Monica Mountain Conservancy and your particularly your leadership. Uh, we've worked very closely in parts of my district and hoping we're going to even work more closely on another part of my district, which I know we were going to meet today, but it's going to have to be another day. Uh, uh, one question while I have you here, if you could, be, and if uh, some of my constituents are listening, because we've had some calls recently about. Uh, new charges for parking um, in certain locations, um, I think at all 12 of the, of the facilities. If you wouldn't mind, just to explain, because we've had a chance to meet with your staff about uh, the challenges in maintaining those, uh, to educate people about the, the change in policy there. Yes, we've had um, very significant budget cuts at the state level. Everybody has. We're not complaining about it. And throughout the entire park world, starting with the state park system, which has had to double its fees, um, user fees are now taking over from tax dollars, which were previously used to do the maintenance and the security for these properties. Our choice was to reduce the amount of rangers, to reduce the amount of maintenance, or to try to ask some of the people who use the park uh, to the various parks to have a, uh, a parking fee where that parking fee was not previously uh, imposed. And where we have flush toilets, uh, manicured lawns, that kind of thing, uh, there are only a few of those and that's a $5 per day parking fee. Other areas where there are less amenities but still trail amenities, still restroom facilities, uh, $3. One of the things that we are exploring with our attorneys right now is whether we can have a differential cost so that the people who are part of the assessment district and who have already been assessed, although not specifically for the maintenance of that property, that they would be given a sticker, they could apply for a sticker, that kind of thing that would be on their car, so that they would be exempt from that. If they're in this assessment if district. If they're within the assessment district. So the reason for that is not so much a technical one because those monies are not fungible, and I wanted to make sure that you all understand that, the case, but just because people have been saying, well, wait a minute, we pay $40 a year, how come we can't go for free? And so it is that issue, and if we can get past the question of differential treatment of individuals who live in the surrounding vicinity versus those who don't, uh, that's the direction that we want to go, and I think that our lawyers will allow us to get there. Okay. So that, will, that would, uh, does create an issue when someone from, say, the center of the valley says, how come I'm parking at Willacre Park now for $3 and the guy right next door doesn't have to uh, have that same uh, parking fee? On the other hand, you can say, yes, but you don't pay $40 a year into the assessment district either. Okay. So uh, that, that information actually we and, and we'll work with uh, I think we met with Dash my staff did to educate uh, particularly those individuals who are within that uh, district because I think that's important uh, information that they may not have at this point but we really appreciate all the work right that and, you the, and, have. and the reason they don't have it is that um, frankly our chief ranger just made this proposal this week okay. it's being vetted by our lawyers and by the time we have that meeting which I know is on a different project uh, I think we'll be able to have an answer for you. Great. Well, thanks again for, for all, that, uh, all that you do in creating a park space and saving some of our really, I think, valuable land uh, that will in perpetuity uh, be available to all of us. So thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, I have Mr. Reyes and Mr. Zine next on the queue, but colleagues, before recognizing Mr. Reyes, you're not done yet. Have a seat. 
Uh, this must be Alumni Day in City Hall, or at least in Council Chambers. Uh, we earlier welcomed former Council Members Holden and Cunningham. Uh, colleagues, let's say hello to Council Member Bernson. <laughs> Mr. Smith, you got to say something. He heard there was an earthquake yesterday, so he decided to show up. <laughs> <laughs> He'll move the question. <laughs> Mr. Reyes. Thank you, Council President. Colleagues, I know when I get thinking, of, when I start thinking about what's happening to our neighborhoods, I think about the incredible significance of open space. But I just wanted to make one more point, and that is because I was trying to say too many things at one time. But the fact is, when we look at our whole notion of how we're going to deal with our open space as it, as it pertains to managing our water systems and managing our open areas so that in 20, 30 years from now, we have enough open space to let our aquifers continue to heal so that when we start connecting with the river, we actually have a strategy in place that talks about cleaning up all that land that has been contaminated by all the older industrial uses. And as we speak to how we continue to move into the leads type buildings, which is environmental friendly buildings and industries, this relationship that we're cultivating with San Juan Conservancy is very critical. Together with the state rec and parks and the city's rec and park system and the county's master plans for the river, being able to leverage these opportunities is key. Being to understand what it means every time we give up open space for buildings that, quite frankly, is only designed to serve only one purpose, instead of looking multi-purpose buildings, will hurt us in the future. So the expertise that we have in real estate, in finance, as well as how to negotiate these complicated deals is severely underestimated. And that's the kind of environment we need to cultivate here in the departments, especially in Rec and Parks. We need to cultivate and model after how Mr. Emerson has been able to establish and moving these funds so that we have the greatest return for our taxpayers. And sometimes it's not an immediate gratification environment. It's about long-term impacts. And that's what I believe we're trying to bring a focus to but in our society, it's hard to grasp that. Since people want to supersize everything, it's hard to really understand the significance of that. For that, I thank you, Joe. Mr. Zine. Thank you. I think we've had a number of uh, comments, good, bad, indifferent, and the focus that, Joe, your concern about nature and preserving and gaining the parcels that we need is to be commended. I just want to make sure that when people start hearing negative, we address it immediately so we don't have that lingering cloud to detract from the good that's being done because I know that if it wasn't for the efforts of uh, Governor Gray Davis and Proposition 50 and your work, we wouldn't be where we are now celebrating that Upper Los Virginies, uh, the old Amundsen project. So I know that the good work's been done. I think that Councilman Misikowski mentioned the yearly updates. I think if we had those annually, then we could satisfy the concerns and the issues, and we could keep up to date for our constituents with our news bulletins, our issues that come up to them, answering, making sure it's done properly so there's nothing negative involved. And that's what I'm trying to do is keep it above board so you don't get criticized, so you're the shining light that leads that, which is what we want to do and support you in that endeavor. And obviously, we're all supportive of maintaining a quality of life and maintaining open space. And that's exactly what you've been doing successfully. I know that you've got a challenge to figure out ingress and egress to Amundsen. I keep on saying Amundsen because that's the traditional name I use. But I know that's another challenge that we're going to have to approach. And hopefully, we'll be able to accomplish that in a short time. But I want to commend you for the work you've done. Continue it. And I think if we do this annual reports back to the council, Everyone will be on the same page. The audits will show that everything's done above board and everyone can go home happy, knowing that that assessment is going for the intended purpose to gather more open space for generations to come. So I want to thank you for uh, appearing today and thank you for the presentation and also let you know 
that we want to work with you in a cooperative relationship with those people who put us in office to safeguard those communities. And if we do this annually around this time of the year, I think it'll be an opportunity for all of us to keep it above board so we don't have to see anything negative coming out. So again, congratulations. Keep up the good work. Thank, Thank you, Mr. Zane. Other members wishing to be heard? If not, let's open the roll, close the roll, and tabulate the vote. 12 ayes. That is approved. Next item, please. Item number 22, call special by council member Zine. Mr. Zine. Uh, on this item, I would ask the location where they intend um, this officer died in the line of duty. And I was just, uh, it says at an intersection. Is that yet to be determined? That's my question. Uh, we've already selected the intersection. In front of Newton. Could I ask where that may be? Newton, in front of the station. Okay, around the Newton station? Yeah. Okay, that's all I want to know okay. it's because of the, yeah. there, are, there are officers who are concerned and who want to be there well, for the dedication the, ceremony. The officers at Newton, and we're going to do a public announcement when it's ready to go. I'm sure, I'm sure okay. that'll be very okay. well publicized, Mr. Zimmer. That'll be very well publicized. Yeah, it'll be very well publicized. Okay, that's what I call it special for. Okay, Ms. Thank Perry? Um, that's fine. I was. Okay, fine. other members on this item? Seeing none, let's open the roll, close the roll, and tabulate the vote. 12 ayes. That is approved. Next item, please. Next item, Mr. President. Uh, 24 through 27 were called special, and there is an amending motion or substitute that's been distributed. Uh, it's stamped 27H, and there, excuse me, 27G, and there is a 27G on the agenda, so I believe that should be 27H. Yes, and uh, actually, colleagues, unless there's an objection, uh, this conversation is going to take a while. Why don't we take up some of the other items called special that we can dispense with rather quickly and come back to this discussion on the Transamerica building and the police headquarters. Okay, the next uh, item then, Mr. President, item number 28. Uh, it's called special for a card from the public and also 29. Yes, 28, 29, and 45. We can uh, take public comment jointly and we'll call forward Ms. Sylvia Lynn Hawkins. Ms. Hawkins on... 28, 29, and 45 all together here. Okay, do I have five minutes? Nope. Okay, can I just read uh, a paragraph? Quickly, please. Yes, go ahead. Three minutes, thank no, you very much. Quickly, please. And I'm gonna ask that you keep to the Again, subject Again, my name matter. is Sylvia Lenny Hawkins, and um, we're talking about on number 28, 29. We're concerned about the streets and lights on houses. Streets are important to stay on at this time to stop witches and warlocks from entering into dark places. It's very important to keep our street lights on. Also on all businesses, buildings, all lights inside and outside of the building must remain on after business hours. All school areas must leave on all lights day and night. There are witches that are trying to come from the north to Los Angeles to live upon us that are called psychics, Buddhists, channers, signs of minds, readers, who never paid their bills, bills. The only area where they can dwell is dirty places, destroyed with roaches, rats, or any other okay. out of order smell. Let me ask you to conclude to, now, please. To work their witches, our witchcraft behavior, they are using mist to throw on our hair, a Jericho is needed to prote for protection. Also, they are using what is called Sprite bottle that is filled with acid and not seven Thank up you. inside the bottle. Thank you. Thank you very much. This will conclude public comment for 28, 29, and 45. Are there members of the council wishing to be heard on any of these items? Seeing none, let's open the roll, close the roll, and tabulate the vote. 12 ayes. Those items are approved. Next item, please. Uh, next item, Mr. President, uh, would be the uh, items 24, 25, 26, and 27. Okay, members, uh, items 24, 25, 26, and 27, although we will uh, eventually have to take votes on these items separately, uh, nonetheless, they are related in subject matter and we shall consider them concurrently. So if we're ready for this batch of items, let me begin by recognizing Councilmember Gruel. Thank you, Mr. President. Um, as I actually, Eric Garcetti and I were kind of chatting a little bit earlier about uh, 
this uh, Transamerica and all of a sudden how we uh, became involved in this discussion. And I think many of us became involved in the Transamerica uh, purchase and issue because concerns were raised about the purchase of the building, the process of purchasing that building, the uh, many changes that had occurred, the confusion, and again, the importance of ensuring uh, that uh, we had a transparent process and one that was a sound uh, business decision and financial decision. Uh, I think we needed to uh, verify that, in fact, we were making a sound uh, purchase and decision. And we felt uh, that the one of the most critical ways to do that was to have a third party a review of that process and we had KPMG that uh, did that and we'll ask them for a presentation with the con uh, controller's office uh, as well. I think that uh, what I heard yesterday and my colleagues was the several things that had occurred. One, the changing market uh, had, uh, I think, made it a, a better deal for us. Secondly, uh, that in fact uh, we could verify some of the dollar figures. I think also um, we determined that many of you, and I know Mr. Zine and I spoke about this yesterday, uh, we should own rather than lease. It is a, a much better investment. And as chair of the audits and government efficiency, that is something that I have found critically important is ways in which we can save those money. I think what we also want to talk about today um, as we look at each of the items, uh, that when we're discussing the purchase of uh, Transamerica, we're not talking about the fact uh, that that says, oh, we're going to purchase first or, or build at first in Alameda. That issue, which I know Ms. Perry has a motion uh, that is forthcoming, I haven't seen yet, uh, would uh, be uh, looking at alternatives for the the various options that we believe a police facility that is going to be one we can have state of the art, uh, brand new, that will be able to last for decades and be one that we can be proud of. Uh, so as we go through, my recommendation uh, will be um, uh, that uh, we receive and file 24, 25, 26, uh, and most of 27 amend, I think it is G and H. Uh, G is the amending motion that takes some of the actions that were determined in committee yesterday and H relative, uh, Ms. Perry, I think, to your uh, amendments relative uh, to a, a final location for LAPD headquarters. So uh, if we can, uh, Mr. President, uh, maybe Mr. Deaton and KPMG and others want to make a presentation as to uh, what uh, Tom Snow and anyone else on your staff appropriate, if you would come to the table, um, uh, briefly describe uh, what has occurred since the last time we were before uh, the council. Well, um, Mr. President, members of the committee, uh, the controller uh, engaged uh, KPMG to do a review of uh, the staff work relative to uh, this purchase. Uh, it might be well just to have them do a quick summary of their, uh, their findings and then we can go from there. Thank you, Mr. Deaton. Uh, good morning, uh, Mr. Chairman, members of the of the council. My name is Tom Snow. I'm a partner with KPMG. Uh, and it was our privilege to perform this uh, very uh, rapid study uh, at the request of the city controller. By way of background, the city controller outlined 10 objectives for us to, um, to work to originally by virtue of the fact that th this meeting was taking place uh, today and the council uh, committee meetings were taking place yesterday, that was pared down into a, a potential two-phase engagement. The first phase of the engagement um, addressed seven of the ten items that uh, uh, the controller had originally laid out uh, by virtue, well, by way of background, let me just go over briefly those objectives. Number one, to determine whether the proposed purchase price for the Transamerica building was reasonable and based on a valid appraisal. Uh, number two, to determine uh, whether the selection of the Transamerica building was based on a proper needs assessment in order to house city employees who are currently leased or currently in leased properties. Excuse me. Number three, to determine whether other locations were considered prior to selecting the Transamerica building. Number four, to ensure whether the decision to purchase uh, the Transamerica building was based on proper purchase versus lease analysis. Uh, number eight, to, do, to ensure whether an appropriate economic impact study was performed prior to recommending moving city employees from the historic core to the Transamerica building. Uh, 
Uh, number nine, to ensure whether it is cost effective to purchase the building. Uh, and number 10, lastly, to ensure whether an adequate analysis were, was performed in order to arrive at the decision to house city employees instead of the LAPD in the Transamerica building and that it is justified and properly supported. Uh, as part of our review, we reviewed an extensive amount of data provided by the city, including the, uh, the prior appraisal. Our conclusion with respect to the prior appraisal uh, performed by another very qualified uh, firm and group of individuals uh, was that the appraisal was reasonable and professional. We do point out, however, that the appraisal is basically over a year old. And uh, we had two concerns with respect to the central plant cost and, and vacancy projections, both of which would, would impact the purchase price. Uh, during our testimony, uh, we were also privileged to hear from the, uh, uh, the appraiser who answered many of the questions raised by our, uh, our review as well as uh, responded to uh, committee questions as well. Uh, in, in terms of our recommendations, uh, the city, we recommended that the city explore commissioning an update, not a reappraisal, but an update of the appraisal. Uh, task number two res with respect to a needs assessment. Uh, our conclusion was there was no formal needs assessment performed. However, city and outside consultants performed other analyses, and in view of the documentation we reviewed, we, we believe the city's process was sufficient in this area. Task number three, uh, whether or not other locations were considered, considered, excuse me, the city did employ an outside consultant. The consultant's report was reviewed and found to be reasonable. And our findings and basically recommendations were that the city had completed a reasonable uh, analysis of other locations. In terms of task number four, a purchase versus lease analysis, there was no present value, uh, net present value study conducted. The city's review uh, of the report by an independent consultant on Spring Street leases uh, uh, was, was also looked at by us. The city did review those items. The decision uh, to purchase versus uh, rent properties, as, as discussed in this council and, and mentioned by Councilwoman Gruel, uh, really precluded a, a, a further analysis of that and that the city had completed a reasonable analysis. In terms of task number eight, an economic impact study, uh, there was no economic impact pack study uh, commission for the effects on this, the historic core building by moving uh, the city employees uh, to the west in the Transamerica facility. Uh, potential acquisition might be adversely affected by the lack of an economic impact study, and we recommended uh, that the city commission such a report. Task number nine with respect to the cost effectiveness. We determined that the city had conducted a very thorough examination uh, of that particular question. Uh, however, it's unknown at this time whether an updated appraisal and an economic impact uh, report would impact that ultimate conclusion. And lastly, task, uh, task number 10, should uh, the Broadway Building House city employees or or LAPD, that item was discussed at the city in, in, in its documentation at length. We believe the uh, process was, uh, was thorough and the, the approach, <coughs> excuse me, taken by the, the, uh, the city was, was adequate. With respect to uh, the remaining three steps of the, uh, the report, task six, uh, five, six, and seven, uh, those would be deferred until a potential phase two to be uh, uh, commissioned by the city would, uh, would be enacted. Uh, and at, at this time, we have no plans to move forward with phase two without your direction. Uh, I'd be happy to respond to any questions that uh, the council might have. No, and I know that uh, there's going to be lots of questions, so, uh, you know, uh, stay put there for a moment. Uh, I think, again, the important point to make is that we're spending $58 million um, in taxpayer dollars in, in leases right now. Uh, that is a lot of money uh, that we believe, if we have and own the building, that uh, in fact we will be able to, to save uh, some of that money. Colleagues, I was one of the biggest skeptics uh, three weeks ago about whether or not uh, this deal made sense. Uh, and 
I think we all look to make sure that we were fiscally responsible. There were, were questions relative to the transaction. There was a lack of transparency and a concern over the process. And I've talked to Mr. Deaton about this as well, that um, we have learned from this experience about uh, how we need to look forward um, in strategic planning and how uh, we identify buildings and how uh, if we change our direction, the importance of keeping the council uh, in in informed of that process. And I think that uh, what I have today is uh, a feeling that uh, it is uh, a good a good purchase uh, for us, that the, again the market has changed, uh, that we've addressed some of the concerns uh, that were raised and uh, believe that we need to be fiscally responsible uh, and, and look forward uh, to uh, having, uh, I'd ask the CLA to come back as we had an audits and government efficiency before Mr. Weiss and I had asked for a, a plan on how we purchase buildings and in the civic center area and our asset management and we will be looking for that in the, in the future. So. Uh, I just wanted to outline uh, kind of what we went through in committee yesterday and uh, where I think we need to move forward uh, to ensure that uh, we're acting fiscally responsible. Thank you. Ms. Perry. Thank you very much, Mr. President. Last week I joined with uh, stakeholders on the Central City Association who convened our, our mission to uh, New York City to speak to investors and lenders and people in the real estate business about the tremendous progress that has been made here in downtown Los Angeles in the last three years. And it has been significant. That's why our conversation here today about the acquisition of this building is so significant. You see, once you cross the threshold of whether or not this is a good or wise purchase, then how we determine we are going to use this building is a matter which can be uh, handled in a separate conversation. The fact of the matter is there is significant conversation and discussion taking place now on the strong possibility and I hope inevitability of a convention center hotel going on Figueroa. The further development of the sports and entertainment corridor and further housing projects in the immediate area, workforce housing projects being proposed almost across the street from the Transamerica building. So I believe that for the city to be able to acquire a piece of property that is as significant as this one with parking attached there too is a good investment regardless of what we determine should go in there. Now I have said before that I would like to see the police headquarters go there, but as an acknowledgement to concerns of my colleagues, I had uh, put in a motion today to you know, deal with the issue of the acquisition, which I'm in full support of, and then to ask the uh, chief legislative analyst to come back in um, a week, which is June 23rd, to talk about some additional locations we've been taking a look at, and those would include the location of City Hall South, the site popularly known as, I need some additional time, to, I'll, and then I'll wrap up, the Rafi Cohen site, as it's popularly known at First and Broadway on the north side of the street, uh, the uh, Caltrans building, the old Caltrans building. So that's four locations that I'd like a report back on and analysis. These uh, sites are all under government uh, ownership, uh, not necessarily just ours, but other entities as well. And I'd like to see some, some analysis done on the possibility of acquisition, consolidation, cost, things like that, to see what we can do to bring people closer uh, to the Civic Center if we decide the headquarters in Transamerica may not work. Not sure yet, but I want to examine that too. Ms. Hahn. Thank you, Mr. President. Colleagues, uh, uh, I, we certainly appreciate uh, getting a second opinion on this. Um, I, I was one of those that, frankly, uh, I, I uh, was fine with it, but it seemed to me, I'm not uh, in real estate, but it seemed to me uh, something, a purchase price that we negotiated a year ago uh, is probably a good deal uh, in today's real estate market. And uh, the purchase price for a Transamerica building is what today? What, what have we, what's our purchase price? 35 million. 35 million. And without having a second appraisal, do you think we could, uh, if we purchase that building today, could we sell that building for more money tomorrow? 
Without a second appraisal. Without uh, putting them on you, the do you think that Do you think the price of that building has gone up? Yes. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> colleagues, I, I think our debate will continue to go on on the future use of the Transamerica building. Uh, I'm not sure we can agree today on whether that should be uh, to house public works or whether that building could possibly house other city departments or whether Transamerica could one day house uh, LAPD. Uh, I've introduced a subsequent motion that basically says, based on the real estate values, we should purchase Transamerica and then decide later how we want to use it, which department should go into it. Uh, that makes sense. Wor worst case scenario, which actually is a best case scenario, uh, if we can't uh, ever decide to move a city department in there or LAPD, we could actually sell Transamerica uh, and actually make money to offset something else we may be doing. Um, it is a good deal. It's a good purchase price. In fact, uh, I don't know how many of you have gotten calls from uh, uh, those who are handling uh, the current owners who say basically they're ready to pull it from us. They're tired of us taking so long to make our decision and in fact they know that they could make a lot more money if they pulled it from us and sold it out on the open market. So we're actually going to get a steal uh, if we purchase Transamerica building today no matter what we use it for. Uh, the other thing I've included in my motion is a little different than one of them that you're looking at, I think we ought to authorize um, uh, not to exceed $230 uh, million uh, instead, of 100 and, uh, instead of 105 because that will cover our costs, in fact, if we do end up placing LAPD there. We don't have to spend that money, uh, but I think we ought to authorize it today uh, if we want to be responsible in case that ends up to be the use. We don't have to spend it. It's not to exceed that amount. Uh, but according to those who have given us the numbers, that's what it would take uh, to do tenant improvements for LAPD. I think that's the best thing we should do today. Let's worry about later which department we're going to put in there. Let's have that debate. Let's talk about the other uh, possible locations for LHPD. I'm still waiting, which I think will come back in two weeks, on the cost of building a brand new police station at First and Alameda. I think that's something we should also look at. But colleagues, this is a good deal. I'm not sure we had to hire KPMG to tell us that. It is a good deal. Anybody in the real estate market knows that price will go up. It already has gone up uh, from what we ended up negotiating the purchase price. I think we're lucky to have that. We ought to buy it today and debate le later what the use is. Again, worst, ca worst case scenario, we can sell that, make money, uh, and help offset uh, some other costs in the city of Los Angeles. So that's what I'm proposing we do today. Yes. I second your motion. Mr. Zine. Mr. President, I uh, personally viewed the facility I don't know how many who are deciding have viewed the facility, but I personally viewed the facility. The property value a year ago till now, I think, has probably increased significantly. The facility, to my examination, I went through the entire building, not every single floor, uh, but it seems it would fit the needs, whether it's for any or all city operations, if it's clerical, if it's administrative, whatever the case may be. Uh, the amenities that come along with it, the auditorium, the parking, it's, I believe, in very, very good condition. I would just ask the value of property gone up in the last year. I think we can look at any property value and know it's gone up in the last year. And if they've held this price at the tune of $35 million from then till now and haven't increased it with the property value increasing, it seems like a great deal. And I would invite people who are questioning the practicality of the purchase, the location of the facility, to visit it. And it, while it may be 35 years old, it's been well maintained and it, it didn't have signs of deterioration at all. I think that the area that surrounds it uh, is a good area. Uh, the parking, you can venture underground. And if it's uh, inclement weather, you don't have to get wet. 
and the adjoining buildings all seem to be in excellent condition. They have excellent building management. And I know our city facilities oftentimes don't receive that same type of care because they're old and antiquated and while this has maintained itself. I think it, the purchase and the opportunity to have whatever goes in there would serve the best interests of the people of Los Angeles. But there are some critics that may say it's not a good deal. Go look at it. And if you look at it and you look at the property value, I think they'll come away with the understanding that it's a very good deal and a building in very good condition. I would ask a question. I don't know if you conducted this part with the upgrades, what it would cost to do upgrades. Our study didn't particularly get into the, into the upgrade portion. That was discussed at the committee meeting, however, yesterday, and I would uh, invite a look at those minutes from that meeting. Because I know many of the floors are vacant. They, they don't have walls and other floors have some improvements and some are occupied, but uh, I would be curious as to the tenant improvements, that what it would cost, the computerization, et cetera, uh, what we'd we're, have to build within that. We're estimating right now $70 million. That includes communications and all the necessary uh, tenant improvements. And those estimates were made by Bureau of Engineering, um, who has just completed, uh, in the process of completing, a very comparable type uh, tenant improvement change to City Hall East. Does that include furnishings? Yes. Okay. So $70 million mm -hmm. to have it up and running. Yep. And that's the entire yeah, 105 total. Purchase price, Purchase plus, price plus improvement. And that's up and running everyone in place. Right. Okay. Thank you. Mr. Garcetti. Thank you very much, Mr. President, and thank you all colleagues for this discussion. Thank you, Ms. Gruel, as well, uh, for the motion today. When I stood up, uh, it was about two weeks ago, and said in a very narrow way, I think that the people deserve to be able to make sure that we have outside eyes look at this. We have achieved just that, and I want to thank KPMG for stepping up so quickly and for the controller um, and her office uh, with their good work. We heard very loud and very clear yesterday, things aren't getting cheaper in downtown and that this appraisal was done the right way. And any of the questions that were still outstanding that certainly I had, I know that Mr. Weiss had and that others had, were really in the range of about $400,000, give or take, one way or another on the central plan issues, I believe, um, and part of it on the vacancy uh, issues if we had, say, a downturn in the economy, we had vacancy rates higher than what was expected. Again, it was not something that was in the uh, millions of dollars, let alone the tens of millions of dollars in terms of costs. We had a responsibility, I said, to taxpayers not only to do the right thing and making sure we don't overpay, but we have a responsibility not to be uh, bad buyers in the sense that we have a responsibility to make sure that a good deal that's before us doesn't slip away uh, like sand through our fingers. And I think we have heard loud and clear from a party that doesn't have a stake in this sale who's looking at the most current information they can find, not reports from the city from four years back, not someone's opinion who has a stake one way or the other in their own building somewhere else or in this building itself, that this is a good deal for the city. We need to stop leasing. We need to stop throwing away taxpayer money. We need to start buying a building, and we should put a department in there and make sure we know which department it is. So today I would uh, back up the motion. I seconded it here um, of Ms. Gruel to make sure that we make this purchase happen. Let's put public works in there. If there's a difference of about which departments can go in, we can always change that. But we should have an intention right now, today, of which department is going in there. Um, and we can defer what's going to happen with LAPD, which clearly is not going to be, it seems like, in Transamerica, to another day. One step at a time, a responsible step at a time. And as I said in committee, and as I said many times, this should be the first building of many that we buy so that we get out of that business of $60 million a year being thrown away in leases. Thank you. Mr. Labanche. Call for the question. Mr. Weiss is the only other member on the queue. So. Would you mind terribly? No, I wouldn't mind, Jack, because I, I went to the greatest high school in the world, John Marshall, that talked about fairness and balance. So. And not feng shui. Uh, Mr. LeBonge withdraws the motion. I Mr. Weiss. I appreciate speaking on Mr. LeBonge's nickel here. And I'll try to make it good for you, Mr. LeBonge. Um, I'll try to make it worth your time. Um, I, I do believe, colleagues, that we have uh, very serious obligations here to ask questions. And that is what I have endeavored to do over these past several months uh, with respect to the purchase of this building. And frankly, one of the reasons 
that I have asked so many questions has been the uh, concerns Ms. Gruel has cited about the process that the city took to get to where it is now, the changes in the positions that have been taken by various entities, and frankly, the fact that everyone needs to understand here, we're not talking about bond money that people in this city will be agreeing to self-assess themselves for. We're talking about general fund money. This is a general fund purchase of a building for 30 years. And so for that reason, I have felt an obligation to ask hard, serious questions and to keep at it. I also believe that just as we have an obligation in this chamber to ask questions, we have an obligation to listen to the answers. And I have listened to everything that has been presented to me, and I listened especially hard yesterday to the folks from KPMG uh, and to the appraiser who was at the table uh, doing calculations for us. And, and, and so based, in, based on all of that, I, I do want Mr. Deaton and Mr. Miller to know that I, this would not be my first choice. The process certainly wouldn't be my first choice. The outcome wouldn't be my first choice. And I still have concerns about that number of the tenant improvements, uh, how much the tenant improvements here are going to cost. Uh, you have assured me time and time and time again that that number for the uh, agencies included in Ms. Gruel's proposal is a hard number and a true number and a real number. Um, and I see our city engineer nodding up and down. I'm going to hold you to that. Um, but uh, I have to make decisions based on the facts that have been presented to me and based on the totality of the information that has been presented. And while I am someone who has asked a lot of hard questions uh, about this issue, I will make my decision today based on these facts and based particularly on the facts that we heard yesterday presented by KPMG. Uh, and based on that, I will withdraw my objections to the purchase of this building. Um, I do believe that Ms. Gruel is absolutely on the right track today when she suggests that the LAPD not go into this building. Uh, if the city were to make the decision to move the LAPD into this building, Mr. Miller, I, I, I don't remember what the numbers are off the top of my head, but it's substantially more in terms of tenant improvements than uh, the recommendation that you made for us. Indeed, Mr. Deaton, that is the reason for your recommendation uh, to move these departments in, is because it is substantially more, and people need to understand it's substantially more general fund dollars. That's what we're talking about. We're talking about literally taking money out of the general fund to do that, in addition to uh, the problems uh, of oversight that would entail by having the LAPD so far away from City Hall, and in addition to um, the fact that the LAPD, frankly, deserves better. They deserve a new building if we can build it for them. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you, Mr. Weiss. And coming back thank to you, Mr. Thank you, Mr. LaBonge. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Weiss, thank you. I call for the question. Okay. That does end discussion. And colleagues, as you know, we have uh, four agenda items uh, listed can before us, many of which have A, B, and C. We have some amending motions that have been uh, introduced as well. So there's clearly a series of votes that need to take place here. Mr. Villaragosa has just pressed his button. Mr. Labonte had called for the question. Uh, I did. So we have ended discussion here, unless it's urgent, urgent. OK. Uh, let me uh, enlist the help of our clerk here to guide us through the series of votes. Uh, uh, first one would be item number 24, and that is uh, an ITGS committee report to receive and file another report. Okay. Any questions? Any objection? If not, let's open the roll, close the roll, tabulate the vote. Twelve eyes. That matter is received and filed. Okay, hey, the next, next item is item number 25, and that's a public safety, budget, and finance, and ITGS committee report relative to the purchase of the Transamerica building. And there are also two committee reports, uh, ITGS and audits and governmental efficiency, that have been submitted without recommendation. And what is council's pleasure on those? Okay, we have 25, which is to purchase the Transamerica building. Council President, Mr. In order, we don't have all the motions before us. Uh, those are on. items on the council agenda. And then item number 27 does have some amending motions, and I don't believe all of them have been distributed yet. 
have uh, 27 H, excuse me, 27 H has been distributed and there's also a 27 I. And I believe Council Member Hahn has a written motion that she was in the process of being distributed. Okay, okay on folks. item number 27. Oh, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. This is one of those days. We have 25 before us right now, Madam Clerk. Three of the committee, three of the four. And that's the Public Safety Budget and Finance and ITGS Committee report relative to the purchase of the Transamerica building. Okay, are we ready to vote on 25 or do we need to consider 27? Some amending motions before we do, and I'm getting nods that yes, we do. So why don't we do this? 26. I believe there's a motion to receive and file item number 20. 25. Okay. Our idea was 25 and 26 to be received and filed, 27 to be received and filed other than G and H. And which is yours? Yours is H, Jim. I? I Sorry, the, I. The I reports apologize. have been renumbered. I. Okay. All right, folks. 25 and 26 in their entireties to receive and file. That's what's before us. Mr. Garcetti, and a point okay. of information? A, a quick informational, well, it's not a point of information, it's an informational question about the asbestos agreement within this. Um, may I ask that, that question? That'd be in order. Just very quickly, um, the abatement, abatement, is that in writing or has that just been oral at this point? Of the current owners who are doing the abatement of the asbestos? That's in, that's in the contract. It's the, abate, the abatement is their responsibility in the contract. And, and is there an upper limit yeah, it's, it's to that? Denied. It's just their responsibility yeah. period. It is. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Council so, President, one more time. Mr. Reyes. I apologize. The, but we are going to receive and file. Essentially, 27 will recognize and deal with the issues. That's why we should be re receiving and filing those two motions. And they yes. want to know the direction that we're going in. Well, ba basically, the ultimate action that we're being, that we're, looks like we're going to take is embodied in, Ms. Grohl, your help here, 27 It looks like G, G and I are the two that uh, Ms. Perry and I introduced, um, and the other is J, which is Ms. Hunt. I'm sorry, those were renumbered. I've just been told by the CLA that what we have printed in red is 27G is really 27H. So okay. it, the, our I, printed I, copy, 27G, is when we call it, I don't know, 27H. Yeah. And for everyone watching at home, believe it or not, we do know what we're doing. <laughs> We do know what we're but talking about. We hide about. it well. But, but so before H we... and I and J are the three items for okay. their right, motions. Right. But, but basically, folks, for simplification, because that's, that is the, the essence of what we're actually going to act upon, those allow us to receive and file a whole bunch of other things and just get them off the plate. That's okay. all we need to recognize. All right. So right now, 25, receive and file. Let's get it off the plate. Correct? Right. Correct. Let's open the roll. Close the roll, tabulate the vote. 12 ayes. 25 is received and filed. 26, same thing, received and filed. Any questions? Let's open the roll, close the roll, tabulate the vote. 12 ayes. 26 in its entirety is received and filed. Let's get that out of here. Now we're down to 27. Uh, and we do have A, B, C, D, G. Filed. And, and for the sake of clarity, we have a 27H that's been crossed out, so there is no 27H, there's a 27G, no, the tw I, and J. No, it should be 27H, I, and J. What was marked 27G should be 27H. Okay. Right. So the official 27A, B, C, D, E, F, and G can all be received and filed? Yes. Is that clear? 27A yes. through G. G is now H. G is now the red, this, this motion yeah. is, they marked it incorrectly. That is, yes, that is 27H now. So the items on the agenda A through G should be received and filed. Okay. Let's open the roll, close the roll, and tabulate the vote. 12 I's. Okay, those are received and filed, which leaves us with H, I, and J. Ms. Perry and Ms. Hahn on points of clarification. Just for a point of clarification, on that motion, which was formerly 27G, the language that was specifically directed to Department of Public Works, is that now a part of 27I? We ha well, we had a 27G, and then we had one 
uh, mislabeled 27G. So the twi are you speaking to the 27G uh, as I, it not, appeared on today's agenda? To the 27G as it appeared on today's agenda? Because I did not want to vote on language that specifically named a department that should go into Transamerica. And so that's, that's Mr. Parks has a Show it to me. Pick it up and show it to me if you have it in front of you. Okay, this is 27H. The issue is, uh, uh, and I think Ms. Hahn has the same question as does Mr. Parks and Ms. Perry, if you would give me a moment, Mr. Um, uh, Padilla. Uh, Mr. Deaton, it's relative to the motion, which is 20, now 27H, uh, specifically says public works should go in that right. building. Right. I think there's some concern by individuals as to if there is flexibility um, or a possibility uh, if you come back and say it is another department that is in lease space uh, should go there. Uh, is that possible uh, with this motion? Um, well, and I think that, uh, again, um, thank you for your flexibility here, Mr. Padilla. Uh, I think many of us would like to make a statement today. We don't think that we, we think there should be a separate building for the police department. But if you came back or someone came back and said, look, we have another uh, city department that's leasing that should go there, that would be in the purview for you to come back to this council and do that. Right. Space allocation is the, the purview of the council. You right. could move transportation. You can move people that are now in Fig Plaza to uh, the Broadway right. building, the Broadway building to, uh, uh, to City Hall. We, uh, and in fact, a lot of that goes on on a kind of a uh, timely basis. Uh, the, the difference between um, on H, it says public works. The crucial issue, well, there's two issues relative to whether or not the police department goes into uh, Transamerica. One is a decision on parking, it'll cost $15 million more for the parking that we need for Parker Center, for a temporary or permanent relocation of Parker Center to the Transamerica building. And if it is a permanent um, and or a temporary um, assignment, we will need more monies for that purpose. And so uh, the difference between uh, H and J, uh, between uh, Councilwoman Girls and, and Councilwoman Hans' motions are the TI money and the parking money. Ms. Hahn. Thank you. Um, I would be willing to withdraw my 27J if uh, the author of 27 H uh, would accept a friendly amendment that it would say public works or uh, any other department. Uh, but I would also think then we would have to um, up the uh, authorization of uh, the financing to not exceed $230,000. Again, there are some people here today who don't want LAPD to go there. But I don't think we've made that policy decision yet as a body. I still think that's a decision we have not made. What we're doing here is to purchase uh, the building and an option to purchase the parking. And then we will decide later as a body what, which departments go in there. We're not just buying a building on spec. We're saying we're buying this building, but we're leaving it up to a policy decision later on who goes there. Again, many of you don't want LAPD to go there. That's fine. But I don't think we've made that decision as a body. So if you would accept a friendly amendment for, it to say, Public Works or any other city department, and then we authorize enough financing to cover us no matter what department goes there, then I will withdraw well, mine. Well, hold on. Mr. Deaton is nodding his I'm head. I'm just saying no, that. Uh, hold, before I just want to clarify that. my response to Councilwoman Gruel's question. Any other department other than the police department. The, the difficulty with the police department is that it requires more parking and more money for security. There is a there is and there is no problem th that if we had the Transamerica building that we could move transportation or general services or other departments that have relatively the same office and parking requirements to that building. So, so the difference is Ms. Hahn wants the complete. Uh, occupancy or potential tenants for Transamerica to be determined at a later date. And nobody's disagreeing with that with the single exception of the Los Angeles Police Department. Right. And the question there is that if we put the police department at Transamerica, we need additional parking and we'll need additional security requirements. If it's permanent or temporary, if it's, if it's permanent, it's a lot more than, than, okay. than temporary. So how does that translate back into the 
and I'm thankful for your help here, Ms. Gruel. I'm, I'm ready to accept her amendment if it says other than the police uh, department. Okay. And that, so that's whatever Ms. Han would like to... It would be... Okay, uh, or, or you can amend your own motion. Yeah, it, it would say that the LAPD, there's no option that LAPD moves into Transamerica ever. That's correct. Well, and then there was additional funding. I don't know if you're ready to, to Mr. Parks that. has the clarification of what if there was a few, you know, uh, small departments that needed to go there, a few yeah, LAPD, it's, it's, but it's, we're talking about the Parker Center the consumer, right. major yeah. administrative yeah. headquarters it, it would, it would not, be not the, being there. The primary police headquarters. Right, sure. because okay. it just, um, let me clarify, again clarify. We have people in 419 Spring yeah. that are the police department. Our intent is to move those members, those, that lease, lease quarters to Transamerica. Sure. It okay. is not but it is the headquarters well, that has the additional fleet requirement and security requirement, not Different administrative security. police department that we can move around the city and do so. so. Madam, Madam Clerk, what I'm hearing is Ms. Grohl amending her own motion. And, and also a clarification was... Mr. Garcetti is okay with that in my yes. second. Okay. Was that including additional funding, 200, I believe, 30 million that was in Ms. Hahn's motion? For the, per, for the um, rehabilitation? Well, what, well, so for whoever moves in. Because uh, the current the current is 103 million, isn't that right. correct? Ms. Sikowski. Point, point of order. I think that's the difference. It can go up to 230 million right. Right. if it's police. If we only ask not police, then the 230 isn't necessary. Isn't, and right. so I think Ms. Hahn is right. We haven't voted on that. We keep right. postponing. I think today Please we today. should vote and decide if that motion, right. as Ms. Gruel is suggesting, does have eight votes to say we buy Transamerica for any department, including administrative stuff, but not LAPD headquarters. Right. And, and so that let's consider that, that the language as it currently stands, uh, but let's address the dollar figure as well. Uh, without police, we're talking 103. Is that what I heard earlier? 105. 105. 105. So we should adopt 105 as a ceiling if there's any change that's necessary that has come, come back for council but approval. But you wouldn't. Okay. Is that clear? So the Mr. language. We have a motion, you, we have a second. Yes. Mr. Zion, yes. Mr. Parks. I just want to make a clarification that uh, Mr. Deaton mentioned 419 South Spring Street. 419 South Spring Street has fugitive warrant detail and some of the other detective operations, but it's not an administrative operation. So the administrative operation would not go to it's Broadway, but some of the other yeah. entities could go to exactly. this facility. Right. Not, not the police administration. In fact, we, are, we have an some of the consent decree and some other, maybe the audit division, we're looking at aspects of the police department that could move to Transamerica. It is, but the, the cost factor relates to headquarters. But they wouldn't but take all that extra security that you exactly. talked about. Exactly. Mr. Parks? That's fine. Mr. Parks? <laughs> yes, we're, people just want to be clear as to what I, we're voting. I was good. I didn't say anything. Okay. All right. Everybody's good? Everybody else is good? So, so it would be any other uh, any department wait, other than LAPD except for administrative or right. LA headquarters. LAPD headquarters. I'm not right. sure. Yes. Right. I, I want to make sure. Right. right. Public works yes. Good. All right. Sorry, <laughs> Mr. Okay. President. Okay, and then we address the the cost cap issue as well, Ms. Perry, and then we're May going to vote. Sorry. Yes. Okay. Yeah, you, One and then we're going to vote after. Clarification on what we're about to vote on, so that we understand. Because we're talking. Okay, if you could just walk us through this again on the, the, the language with respect to what may or may not be in this building. Bottom line, the occupancy for Transamerica building uh, in terms of which city departments to be determined. So we're giving ourselves the flexibility, but we are choosing today to not have the Transamerica building be home to the primary police headquarters. There may be other specific units or functions of LAPD that end up in Transamerica, but it will not be the new police right. headquarters. You're forbidding it. Yes. yes. Okay. That's um, what we're that's, that's what we're voting on today. I, I wouldn't support. Okay, that. but that's what we're about to vote, vote on. on so you can vote no on that. Yeah. Anybody else can yeah. vote no on that. Yeah. That's Let's right. open the roll. Okay. Close the roll. Tabulate the vote. Eight eyes, four noes. That is approved. Madam Clerk. Uh, what else is remaining before uh, us? The next motion before council is 27I, and that's Perry Villaragosa. And the motion itself? 
Uh, and that's regarding uh, the first moving clause is to continue to Wednesday, June 23rd, the public safety master plan and the development of a public safety complex at First and Alameda and to allow for completion of the review of this previously instructed by council. Actually, the, those uh, 27A and 27B were both received and filed. And then the second moving clause is to instruct the CLA with the assistance of the Bureau of Engineering and General Services Department to report to the City Council on or before Wednesday, June 23rd with a review of alternative locations for the LAPD headquarters within the Civic Center and recommendations for best location for this facility. Okay, I believe that's clear to everybody. Uh, without objection, let's open the roll, close the roll, and tabulate the vote. 12 ayes. That is approved. See you next week. Thank you, Tom. And there is a 27J, and I believe Councilmember Hahn wished to withdraw her motion. 27J. Yeah, it's been withdrawn. Mr. Villaraigosa? You're withdrawing it? Okay, let's all take a deep breath and uh, yeah. proceed to the next item. Okay, Council has motions for posting and referral. Motion shall be posted and referred. There are excuses on the desk. Councilmember Garcetti requests to be excused July 27th, 28th, and 30th for city business that meets Council policy. Mr. Garcetti is excused. And that clears the desk for closed session. Okay, in conformance with California law, the Council will now adjourn into closed session. Let me announce before going into closed session that Mr. Parks is recused on 48, 49, 50 and will not participate in closed session deliberation of these matters. Sergeants, please clear the chambers. Welcome back into open session. Madam Clerk, next matter before us, please. First item before council is item number 48, and that settlement in the case of a state of Eric Mendoza versus City of Los Angeles and Hernandez versus Palomares, and that's in the amount of $250,000. Let's open the roll, close the roll, tabulate the vote. 11 ayes. That is approved. Forthwith, please. Next item. Next item, Mr. President, item number 46, and that's in the case of Nichols versus City of Los Angeles in the amount of $1,182,515,076. Let's open the roll, close the roll, and tabulate the vote. 11 ayes. That is approved. Forthwith, please. Next item. Next item is item number 47, and that's an appropriation for outside counsel uh, in the amount of $29,792.50. Okay, let's open the roll, close the roll, tabulate the vote. 11 ayes. That is approved. Forthwith, please. And next item is item number 51 in the settlement, settlement in the case of Beagle Construction versus City of Los Angeles and the amount of $854,409.79. Okay, let's open the roll, close the roll, tabulate the vote. 12 ayes. That is approved as well. Forthwith, please. And that clears the desk. Okay, let's also send items 24 through 27 forthwith. And colleagues, this is the end of our agenda. Do we have any announcements today? Any announcements? If there's no announcements, do we have any adjourning motions today? Adjourning tributes? If there are none, then thank you all very much for your time and attention today. Madam Clerk, Ms. Perry. Adjourning motion? Yes, this is an adjourning Please motion. Please rise for an adjourning motion. Thank you very much, Mr. President. I want to adjourn in memory of Mrs. Dorothy Cole, who was a vibrant member of the South Los Angeles community, and in particular, the 9th Council District. She was a political activist whose strong ties to the community led her to fight for a better quality of life. In 1969, after the Kennedy assassination, she became active with a registrar of voters in the Democratic Party. 
She was a member of a number of grassroots organizations, including Neighborhood Housing Services. In this capacity, she worked with community members to get federal grants to rehabilitate homes in her neighborhood in the late 1970s. Another testament to her commitment to the community occurred during the Olympics in Los Angeles. She asked the Olympic Committee to hang banners down Central Avenue so that South Los Angeles could share in the excitement and uh, the uh, majesty of the Olympics here in Los Angeles. And she will always be remembered as a gracious and lovely woman who did so much for so many people in the Central Avenue community and the Dunbar Economic Development Corporation. Thank you, Ms. Perry. Other tributes? Madam Clerk, please call the roll. Thank you all very much. This meeting is adjourned.